Oh. Fish on. Oh. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh. Look at that fish. Oh. Fish on. Oh, yeah. Oof. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Look at this monster of a ling. My name is Live Stephanie, and you are watching Northwest Fishing Secrets. All right, so we are now in the kitchen. Uh, we've got our three perch right here. Uh, there was, uh, so Brian caught a couple flounder. He kept one, I kept one, so I'm going to cook that separately. Uh, I've already covered that in another video on how to do the flounder. Uh, so today we're going to focus on uh, on perch. Um, now we've got a couple different species here. And I'll let me show those to you. Ooh, they're heavy. These are, these are, by the way, really big perch. Uh, this guy here measured in at... Uh, it's a striped perch and it measured in at one pound uh, and 2.1 ounces, uh, measuring at about 14 inches, uh, tip of the tail all the way to the, um, to the, uh, his mouth. Freaking crazy. Really? So we're going to pull this one aside. Actually, no, no. What we're just going to do is, um, I'm going to start with this guy here and, uh, just show you how to fillet these guys. So we'll need a nice fillet knife. Make sure it's sharp. And we'll start uh, just kind of behind the gill plate here. There's gonna be a little bit of wasted meat in this spot here. Um, I When I fillet them, usually go around uh, that fin there and then just come up uh, right there behind the gill plate, go down to the rib cage, and then we will uh, just follow down uh, the backbone and uh, slowly skim away the meat uh, one step at a time and this should all come off in one nice fillet. So I'm going to fast forward that. It's going to take a little while but you'll get the gist of it. All right, here's one filet. Uh, yeah, there's actually quite a bit of meat on these guys, especially when you get the bigger ones like that. Filet's a lot like a salmon. Um, definitely make sure that you take your time around the rib cage uh, to you know just skim across those bones uh, really nicely to not waste any meat. As you can see here, these are I mean, this is just bone left right there. There's no meat left on there anymore. Um, I know some people like to just do a quick filet job where they just cut through the whole thing. But now you're filleting at the uh, height of the, uh, the, the spine. And um, what you're doing is you're wasting a um, section of meat here as well as underneath the spine. Uh, that's just a little bit more recessed. So um, I like to actually just take my time and do this portion first. Work your way around the spine. And then uh, slowly work that blade um, across the the rib cage like that until you just get every last little piece of meat. Um, it's just that way you got more food and you're not, uh, uh, not wasting, uh, meat just out of respect to the animals. So we're going to go ahead and just do the other side, um, and do the other fish as well. All right, now that the uh, fish are filleted, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put these guys into a bag to take out. Um, I'm gonna be out on Thursday again to, to go boating, and um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dump them in the sound then so that, again, the nutrients can just go back uh, into the system.
So a couple things still, we have uh, pin bones right in here. Uh, so there's a strip of those. Uh, first thing we're gonna do though is just remove the skin. Uh, pretty simple process. Uh, what you need is, I, I don't like using a sharp fillet knife for this. This is actually uh, the one time when you don't want a knife that's too sharp. So instead, we're gonna use just a cheap kitchen knife. <laughs> Doesn't need to be anything totally crazy. Um, in order to skin the fish, grab just a little towel here to make it a bit easier. You want to cut yourself a little starter, uh, like a tab here to, to hold on to. Um, and then you're going to skim the knife underneath the fillet. So between the, the fish or the, the meat and the skin, you're just going to skim that knife through, maybe wiggle it just a little bit uh, to work it through. And that should give a pretty clean fillet job. You have to experiment with the angle a little bit. If you angle too far down, you'll cut through the skin. If you angle too far up, now you're going to cut way up through the meat and uh, you're going to uh, waste um, a lot of meat. So uh, yeah, just experiment a little bit and see what works best for you. Okay, so there we go. So we got a little little uh, spot started. This is good for me to hold on to right there while I work the knife through. So let me go in here. Let's see if we can get it all in one piece. All right, look at that. That is just skin right here. Pretty cool actually, it's almost leather. You could make a shoe out of this. Look at that, that's pretty cool. So now we've got, uh, this is pretty much 99% meat. Um, all we're gonna do is just cut out these pin bones real fast. So this is the only piece that, uh, quote unquote, get wasted. Um, but I believe it's only fully wasted if you throw it in the trash. So we're just going to put it into the bag that's going back into the ocean here on Thursday. All right, before we get started with breading the, uh, the, the fish, uh, I'm super excited. I decided I'm going to do fish and chips tonight. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and just turn these potatoes into French fries. I already cleaned them up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just, just cut them down. Let's make some fries. Who doesn't like French fries? All right. I decided that this is plenty of fries. I had a fourth potato there, but, uh, but, but I'm, I'm not going to make four potatoes for French fries. Uh, so this should be plenty. I've got the um, a fryer here that I've got preheated already to 375. Uh, so now let's go ahead and bread the fish and get stuff in the fryer. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and start uh, battering up the fish. Here is uh, <laughs> the entire catch here, um, or at least the two uh, perch, as well as one of the flounder. Um, now, these two fillets are from the, um, the, the, the pile perch and these fillets here are from the striped perch. So I just found it was interesting. Uh, there is actually a bit of a color difference. Now it could be just this fillet right here, um, but I am noticing, I'm hoping the camera shows it well. Uh, there's more of a uh, kind of a pink purple hue to, uh, to the pile perch meat than there is to the striped perch. So we'll see if there's a taste difference. I am gonna keep them separate. Um, and I did actually separate them out into the, the, the two different uh, halves of the fillets. Um, and then the flounders, just like in the other video I've done, uh, just still has the bones in it. I'm just gonna eat around the bones on that one. It's not, not worth the hassle to fillet a flounder. So let's go ahead and just start uh, giving them an egg wash. We'll, we'll just start with the flounder here. Yeah, in case you guys are wondering what I'm using, uh, it's this stuff here. 
friggin' delicious. It's got some paprika in there, just the right amount of seasonings. Super easy to use, too. I mean, I've made this stuff myself, but it's just, you can't be, it's like a couple bucks. All right, and on to the pile perch. All right, look at that. Finished up all the fish. It is battered, rather breaded, and uh, ready to go into the fryer. So the fryer is preheated. We're gonna start out with the fries because they take a lot longer to cook. Never start with the fish and then do the fries. Your fish is gonna be cold and soggy by the time uh, your fries are ready. So we're gonna start those and then throw in the fish uh, right as we're almost done. All right, so the fries are all cut up and the fish is all uh, breaded and we are ready to throw the stuff into the fryer. Uh, we're preheated to 375, just get it as hot as you can and be a little careful uh, when you do this because it can definitely spray up some oil on you. Uh, most important thing is just make sure that you do the fries first because they do take quite a while. So I'm gonna do a couple baskets of those. There we go, those are going. Uh, so we'll let those cook and um, we'll get back with you here in a couple minutes when those are ready and then we'll transfer the fish over. Oh yeah, look at that. Bowl here. Get those fries seasoned with a little bit of pepper and salt. Fries are ready. Now the fish doesn't take very long, so we're gonna go ahead and just start with the thicker pieces first, which is gonna be the flounder. Look at that. So we're gonna put the, uh, oh, this side here, oh, the name will come to me in a second. It's the, the striped perch going over here. The striped perch was a little bigger. Now we're gonna start with the thick pieces. Looking good. Then what we'll do is uh, put the pile perch over here with the flounder. There we are. And we'll do the thinner, uh, the, the, the belly side of the fillets. They're just a lot thinner, so they're not going to take very long at all in the fryer. So we're going to do those last. Oh yeah, those are ready. Look at those. That's beautiful. Okay, so this is the uh, striped perch right here. We're going to put those guys up here in this corner. So we're gonna just gonna follow that same uh, idea and put the the, the you know, other striped perch pieces. Oops. Into that side there. Gotta keep them separate because once they're fried, it's very hard to tell the difference. Ooh, those are curling up in there. That's pretty cool. Alright, let's go ahead and check on our flounder here. Oof, man, this is looking good. So what the uh, flounder is definitely done. Give those two pieces another second. All right, they are done as well. Last pieces of fish are in. So this is the uh, the striped perch or pile perch. Keeping everything separate so that we can do a taste comparison. All right, let's do this. Let's dish up 
I'm going to grab a little piece of, uh, let's see here. I'm getting confused. Okay, this is the, uh, the, the, the striped perch, little piece of belly, and a uh, piece of the back fillet. I'm uh, going to grab a, just a nice handful of fries. Boom. Look at that. I'm going to do the flounder for later. We've eaten that before together, so let's, uh, let's focus on the new stuff here. A little bit of my, uh, that Danish stuff I was talking about, some remoulade. So good. If you're ever in Denmark, just do yourself the favor and buy it. I mean, you can buy it here too, but it's way too expensive. A little bit of ketchup for the fries. Boom. That is dinner. Fish and chips from the Puget Sound. These little guys were literally swimming around like 12 hours ago. So that's that's about as fresh as it gets. Let's go ahead and chow down. All right, everyone. I'm so glad that you get to join me for this step right here. Actually, I'm more glad about just being able to eat this food because it's been a super long day. I have not eaten at all since breakfast, which was before going fishing at like 530 in the morning. See, this is the striped perch right here. This is the pile perch. So I'm just curious if there's actually a difference in flavor. The color was a little bit different with the fillets. So let's see how they taste. I'm just so stoked. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's warm up with a little fry. Mm. Oh yeah. You know what, we're just gonna go for the, the big fat pieces right there. Look at that. That's a beautiful piece of striped perch right there. Fish and chips, homemade. I'll put on a little bit of my Danish sauce there. Flavor is really good. Little mushier taste. It, flavor is similar to rockfish, but a little on the mushier side. I gotta say, I like rockfish more. So let's go ahead and just do a one-to-one -one comparison now with the uh, the pile perch. A little sip of water in between to flush the taste buds. Mm. Flavor wise, very similar. Again, maybe a little less mushy. Could be that the fillet is a little smaller, that it crisped up a little bit more. But um, again, flavor wise, very similar to rockfish, but mm, I don't like the consistency as much as a rockfish. Um, or cod and stuff. Rockfish and cod, they flake really nicely. This stuff here, it kind of, I mean, it, it, again, it's delicious. It just doesn't flake as nice as those other fish. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm still super happy. I'm going to go ahead and enjoy these as well as the flounder that's still over in the kitchen. So, mm. Mm, yeah, you guys get out of here. I gotta, mm, I gotta eat all this food. So thanks for watching and, um, you know, just tune in again. We got new videos coming out every week. Um, I'm out fishing probably, geez, at least twice a week. So trying to film new videos for you guys, you know, go ahead and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos. Again, this is all Pacific Northwest oriented, really trying to show, you know, fishing in the Puget Sound as well as the rivers, lakes, um, you know, any areas that you, if you live in this area, might really encounter. Um, and it's all about just giving tips on what you can catch, where you can catch it, and how to catch it, and then how to cook it. Um, so, yeah, if, if that's something you are interested in, again, this is a brand new channel. So um, we're just starting out, you know, give me some hints too. If there's something you want to see or something you want to see differently, just let me know. Feel free to just throw that in the comments below. Um, but yeah, subscribe, hit the little bell, and that way you can see more videos here in the future. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next time. And now it's time for this. And no, my little poodle, she's not getting any of it. All right, see you guys. Tight lines.